everybody welcome on the lights on data show i have the pleasure as always of introducing our guest for today our guest has more than 30 years long experience with analysis to make predictions he is passionate about automating analysis and data visualization, while also including animations when necessary. With over 20 years experience in working with Python, he's very skilled in many of Python's data science modules. In August 2018, he created Integrated Machine Learning and AI, which provides services and instruction on how uh, in the data science in the data science arena. In July 2019, he also joined the very talented and outstanding culture of UL's Spectre team, and he currently is their lead data scientist. In summary, our guest could be described as being a dedicated data scientist and dynamic systems modeler and analyst. He loves working with people, and you will know exactly what I mean when we bring him on stage, to improve the performance of business or products through better design. He brings great joy, has a wonderful energy about himself, and I am really looking forward to this episode. Welcome, Tom Ives. Hi, guys. Hey, y'all don't think I'm underdressed, do you? Oh, my goodness. No, this is perfect. Okay. <laughs> and, and I would never be accused of selling out for free merchandise. I want everyone <laughs> to know that. I mean, I would never spend a long period of time producing something in gratefulness for said merchandise. Oh, my don't, goodness. Yeah. That was a great, great <laughs> lead into something that we want to show you. Well, exactly. and before you show that, can I say one other thing? Yes, please. It's I've struggled to sleep and eat and focus <gasps> since the time you invited me to be on this show. Because <laughs> I know your show is a little outside my bailiwick, as we call it in the U.S., but I've learned so much from George's videos and your shows, and it's been good for my analytics focused mind to get out of get into the greater realm of data so i really appreciate what you guys do so much that's very kind and it's really because of guests like you uh that really you guys are making the the show what it is so we appreciate it and today we're going to talk about how to build a data science career so we're really excellent. looking forward to that excellent but, but before I know, that yes i know you brought something in with you today so oh uh, just a just a little thing just yeah. a little thing all right let's uh let's tune in to it tom aren't you a doctor no tom aren't you a banker no tom aren't you a dentist no tom aren't you a lawyer no no tom Aren't you an insurance salesman? No. Tom, aren't you a dentist? No. Hi, Tom. Susan? No, silly. This is your fashion conscience. You sound like Susan Walsh. Well, Tom, can you imagine a better voice for your fashion conscience? Good point. Tom, I see that you are down. Down because people don't see you as the data scientist and data zealot that you are. Exactly. Use that love you have for the history of math and science to figure out how a modern day data scientist and data zealot would dress in modern times. I'm sure you'll nail it. Okay, excellent. How ancient math and data science zealots dressed. Oh, I don't think that'll work. Ah, yeah, that should do it. What's the modern version of that? Modern version of a cloak. Good morning data show hoodie. Ah, that should do it. Tom, did you lose your job? No. Tom, did you lose your job? No. Tom, are you out of work? No. Tom, did you lose your job? No. Tom, at 
think the Furricans have changed the name of their show. Lights on Data Show. Lights on Data. No. Okay. Tom, you're a data scientist, aren't you? Yeah. Tom, you're a machine learning specialist, aren't you? Yes. Tom, you're a data zealot, aren't you? Yes. Tom, you're an engineer that uses data, right? Yes. Yes, he is all those things. But most of all, he is a data evangelist. This is brilliant. brilliant. <laughs> well, Tom, you are a data evangelist, but also a great uh, director and editor. <laughs> well, so I, I've got a little bit of a holdout. That's not the uh, director's extended version yet. So, but oh. it, it was a, it was enough to get on the show with. And I have to explain when I produce these, they're just my vision. So I'm like, well, I hope people like it. And I want to quote that famous little character in the great artistic movie, Madagascar. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, compared to how much you guys uh, love them, you hate them compared to how much I love them. Well, as soon as you two liked it, I'm like, okay, my work's done. Because, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure how we it's going to go over. We loved uh, it. We watched I'm it glad. together. It was so, so, so funny and thoughtful. Really, we're very grateful. Yeah, it, we it was a few times. It was fun. <laughs> to, it was fun to make that one. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we got to say hello to, to the audience. Hi, Jonathan. Very nice to see you. And uh, Gus. Gus, have Jonathan. Here. And Hani and Nima, and I think this might be Giovanna, maybe? Uh-oh, it could be Robert. He's had those problems. Oh, there, that'd be Giovanna. There you go, and Ashish, and uh, Albert. Very nice to be here, Albert <coughs> and Matthew. Yes. Awesome. Yes, um, so thank you all for joining in. And Susan is here. Uh, also my cost, my uh, con fashion. my fashion conscience. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. Such a smooth as, voice. As Manfred was was mentioning, you are a secret director for AI movies. And she was the lead off voice talent, so everyone knows I she's was my daughter. About that. That's well well done, like Michelle is saying here. Well done. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for joining us and. And yes, and finally, Tom is here. I completely <laughs> agree. I think we need to bring him again already. <laughs> I would and love having to. Having one of your kids too. Uh, yep. Yeah. How long, you go. How long did it take you to create the, this video? Oh, I, I take the Fifth Amendment on those questions. <laughs> <laughs> we don't discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> let's just say, yeah. let's just say I eat up some free time doing it, but it's a labor of love. Yes. So that's why we're even more grateful because we know how long it takes to actually create something of that length and to think it through and to involve so many people. So people and animals, of course. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like Tom and everybody. <laughs> so nice. <clears throat> I am very curious. What is your PhD in? Ah, this is the big reveal. Mm -hmm. And before I answer it, I'd like to point out Tesla, Nikolai Tesla, was a mechanical engineer. And I'm still bitter that electrical engineering departments have stolen all that material from mechanical engineering departments. But it's in mechanical engineering officially. But if you look at what I focused on, I wish I could call it multi-physics engineering. Mm. But yeah, because I did uh, have a lot of electrical people on my committee. And uh, I took, in my graduate school days, I took a lot of coursework from the electrical engineering department. And mechanical becomes so generalized that even my first serious job out of uh, undergraduate was with the Naval Nuclear Program. Mm -hmm. And so when you go through that program, the industry regards it as somewhat of a master's 
practical masters in nuclear engineering. Mm -hmm. So I was very honored to be part of that whole culture. Um, I never went out to sea, but uh, I trained with the Naval Nuclear Ensigns and lieutenants and achieved a lot of the same ranks that they do, but did it at uh, the training facilities. That's impressive. <clears throat> it was it, it was an intense program, but it was a super big honor to be part of it. I'm sure. Oh, we keep on finding new things about you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, we do have a lot of people that are joining our show today and probably will also watch the recording that do want to learn more about how they could get into data science. And I know there were a few that I've directed them towards this episode in particular, as I thought, well, who would be better to answer them than Tom? And there's people that are either on the learning path or they have finished certain studies and they want to see how they could um, gain further in their career. So why don't we start with the, the beginning, I guess, right? What is maybe, what, what would you say, Tom, if there ever is some sort of um, education track that people could follow? So we deal with this a lot in our Do they have to have a PhD? No, 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 no. <laughs> we, we deal with this question <clears throat> a lot in our integrated machine learning and AI family. We have a Saturday morning mentoring session. Anyone can come to that. Anyone can join our Slack work group. But I would say probably one of the most important articles we've written as a family was called Being a Data Scientist. And by the way, George and Diana, I put the, uh, the address for, oh, thank you, that, that post right there showing up at the top. If you're trying to break into data science, I would read that and all the other mentoring posts. We are... Um, eagerly creating blog posts to help people understand not just what we would teach, but also what we've learned from other friends in the community. Uh, in this blog post, Andrew Jones is featured. Um, <clears throat> and if you'd scroll up for just a minute there to the be, do, have, the main premise, oh, go, go up a little bit right there. Oh, yep. What we're trying to say is, hey, don't think you have to have a data science role title to be a data scientist. Mm -hmm. Get the best job you can because you've got to pay rent and eat and start using data to enhance your performance in that role. That means you're being a data scientist and you're doing data science. And then as you build up your resume over time with data science work, you will eventually have the recognition of being a data scientist. Mm -hmm. But make sure you're always seeking to be a data science scientist. And that is the overarching principle of this article. And if you scroll down a bit and get to the part we, we use uh, Ta as a mythical character I created, there you go. To me, uh, Andrew Jones is a perfect example of uh, Ta-san, uh, Ta's youngest uh, sibling. And uh, he just exemplifies so much of what we're trying to say in this article. And then uh, Gilbert and I have become really good friends, had some uh, intimate talks on these subjects and getting down to the spirit of it. And I think his book embodies a lot of the principles that are necessary to become a, a top level data scientist. And I'm, I've gotten upset with Gilbert several times because I accuse him that he spied on my path past to, you know, as a wrong example of the things he's teaching, him and John Thompson both. <clears throat> and then this is one of the uh, authors of the article, and he is uh, equally of a mechanical engineering background. And uh, to me, when people say, well, why did you decide to switch to data science? So I, I didn't switch. Mechanical engineers that do modeling they do what's called empirical modeling. We could have called that data science back in the day. That was fitting models to data instead of using first principle physics. But first principle physics are based on d data science principles too. So they're, they're not just close cousins, they're almost clones with a little bit of difference in genealogy. And then a, I don't know if anyone knows this woman, 
Uh, she's a bit crazy <laughs> like me, <laughs> but we, I loved, I love Susan's story and I love her spirit. And I think she exemplifies uh, while she wouldn't call herself a data scientist, she's definitely a data evangelist as Scott Taylor pointed out at the end of the film we just watched. For sure. For sure. And then my daughter, she's a big reason I'm here. In fact, uh, Manpreet and I are just cheerleaders of one another. We keep, when we feel down or beat up, we're like, Hey, stop that. Don't let that stop you. Keep going. And, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, she's, yeah, she's fantastic. Yes, she is. But, uh, and then uh, these are people that create good content around this area on LinkedIn, Michael Green and Jonathan Tesser. We're big fans of theirs. Thanks for going through that. That, that post, everyone, um, we put a lot of energy into writing that as well as we could. And we, we think it's helped a lot of people. Uh, w whenever people reach out to me for mentoring on LinkedIn, I always make sure that this is one of the links that I send them just to start developing that correct mentality. Because as you've seen, a lot of times uh, PhD or master's candidates will get the preference or someone with years of experience. And so while data science is exploding, there's still a lot of competition. Don't let that discourage you. Just get a job where you can use data and prove yourself and grow your skills. And you will eventually get a data science title, I'm sure. But don't worry about getting the title right away. For example, when I have NLP questions, um, I turn to Manpreet a lot of the times as my first go-to because mm -hmm. she I know she's studying advanced papers on that all of the time. But <clears throat> um, I completely lost my train of thought. Anyway, <laughs> it's just a spirit of keep going and, and build that experience. That's where and, I was going in general. what I hear, Tom, I mean, there are so many different starting points that one could have. Yes. And there's no um, necessarily direct trajectory or direct path. And you can have any different background. What really matters is what you're wishing for, what you're striving for, and just yes. keep on working towards that goal. Exactly. And now I remember what it was. When Manpreet, well, she started as a data engineer with PACT. And I'm really proud of her for that. When she saw how excited I was that she was starting that way, she was a little confused at first. She's uh, Ta R in the story, in the post. And um, I just pointed out, Manpreet, starting out as a data engineer is going to make you a much better data scientist. Just keep using your Python skills and your data science skills to do better in that role. And now she loves that job. And she's learning tons in it. And uh, yes, that, that's definitely a very, very good advice. Oh, and thank you, Gus, for, for sharing the, uh, the link to the article as well. Thank and you. There are a lot of people that are already asking for it. So and definitely was, go ahead and read it. There was also a question about the link to the Slack channel. Ah, yes. It's not a link as much as um, if you send a request to anyone, including myself, that you know is part of the integrated machine learning and AI channel, they can add you. But specifically me, Manpreet, Giovanna, Gaith Sankari, uh, Greg Coquio, he's part of our steward team. Um, and then Tina, Mary, in case you guys know her. And finally, uh, Zaina. I think Zaina is enough. If you know Zaina, <laughs> you know her by Zaina. And plus I struggle to pronounce her last name correctly. <laughs> Resgari, I think, but I probably butchered it. <clears throat> Tom, tell us a little bit about your journey in uh, with data science. So from the moment you started studying until where you are right now. Absolutely. Uh, when I was in undergrad, um, I remember the first time I got geek chills, I like to call it, where oh. you get excited about something intensely intellectual and analytical <laughs> was, uh, it was... I was in a modeling class for mechanical engineers, but they were teaching an, a way to model mechanical and physical system, multi-physical systems using a technique called bond graphs that was created by Henry Painter out of MIT. And mm. it was it's a graphical way to represent differential equations, which are a, a more involved form of calculus. 
And when I saw how beautiful they were and how visually they demonstrated how the, the differential equations of a system come together, I was immediately fascinated. And then when I did my senior design project, because of that course, it occurred to me, oh, I need to model, I need to predict the dynamics of this system before we build it so I can have a clue about the parameters. Well, it just occurred to me, I was doing virtual prototyping and I was hooked. And I could never stop thinking as I was learning the various systems in this giant nuclear power plant that would have floated normally, but it was in the middle of the Idaho desert. Uh, it was a <laughs> replica of the third plant of the USS Enterprise nuclear powered aircraft carrier. Wow. And, and I would be in charge of running this plant as a young man. And I had Watt supervisors on both sides, but they really emphasized theory to practice in that program. So it was actually just helping my modeling brain grow in, in that time that I worked with our nation's naval nuclear program. Just an outstanding program, by the way. And <clears throat> it's changed a lot, but it was very good back then still. And then I was eager to go back to grad school. So I was intent on becoming an expert at predicting system behavior before it was built. And as you can imagine, you can't always use first principle physics to model those things. So it, this is like F force equals mass times acceleration, force equals a spring constant times how much the spring stretches, you know, just starting at the, that's first principle physics. But sometimes we'd have a system that, a subsystem that was kind of complicated and we would have to take measurements as we change parameters and come up with what we call an empirical model, pretty much data science. And so even throughout my PhD program, there were empirical models that people had developed that had saved my bacon in my research. And my research was on design and modeling of hybrid electric vehicle power plants. And the models were very accurate. I was so pleased. And I'd learned a lot from my mentors <clears throat> and then I went on um, to work for some companies that I was able to land those jobs for two reasons, my modeling skills, but also because I had a real emphasis on design methodology, uh, how we go about designing systems and such. And uh, as I moved through that, I just saw a shift in more of an emphasis on using data and processing data and automating the visualization of it using statistics based models because we couldn't take enough measurements and before long I, I found myself changing companies a time or two and i i went to a friend that's he's basically well no he isn't basically he's a a cloud architect expert and he works for microsoft now and we're dear friends and i i just said scott i I really want to take my career this way. And I, I thought you'd be great to talk to. And he listened to me carefully describe my career. And he goes, Tom, you're a data scientist. And I went, well, yeah, I'd say that. He said, well, Tom, do you realize how hot that field is? And I said, Scott, you're talking to the worst person on the planet about current events, especially <laughs> in the tech area. And uh, he said, well, Tom, you, you really should focus on that. And then I realized, oh, I basically already know this stuff. It's just I'm behind on the lingo. And I'd learned neural networks and expert system design in uh, grad school. But, and I'd been continuing to do empirical modeling here and there in my jobs. But when I saw how the field had exploded and why, I got re-energized all over again. And then it dawned on me, oh, this is a field that requires constant learning and growing? Yeah, <laughs> I, really, I really got excited then. And so, uh, but I realized the thing that I knew I needed all those years was an online portfolio. The way you get new jobs had changed. So I started emphasizing building an online portfolio, having a, a strong online presence. And it took a while to build it. But there's so much good advice and help out there on how to do it. And it's at this point, I usually like to quote my young friend, Louis Owen from Indonesia, very talented Indonesian data scientist, works for World Bank. And he said this to me one time when we were talking, helping each other with some keynote talks. 
Tom, it's not the best data scientists that get the positions, it's the most visual ones. Mm. And then I, I operated in that premise, but I, I went, I don't know if I've gone back to him to say this, but it dawned on me, you know, as you're trying to be very helpful to the community and more visual, it actually causes you to grow quite rapidly in your data science or whatever field you're in, really. If you're trying to give back to the community and, and be more visual in that method, it does help you grow a lot. That's, that's quite a story and the mm -hmm. message as well. Uh, I want to have a question here. Um, uh, wow, where is it? Where is it? Matthew had it. We're going more into details here, but you know, what would you say? What would you say? Uh, to what extent is AI important for data science? And I quickly <laughs> prepared this. Um, <clears throat> And I, and I'm, you know, I, I'm wondering. I think Matthew is really referring to: Do you need to um, go into understanding AI, developing algorithms for AI in order to be called a data scientist? Um, let as as many people know, I am just a passionate um, learner, student of the history of math and science. And I think what we're going through now with what I would call the data age, it's not like we haven't had data all along. It's just that now its usage is exploding. And if anyone's seen the movie Current Wars, where they portray George Westinghouse, Thomas, and Thomas Edison, Nikolai Tesla, and others, um, I would say we're looking very much like that era. And to me, George, you're kind of like a George Westinghouse in that movie. You're saying, well, I'm an industrialist now, but I'm an industrialist of data. And we need to be careful how we use this. We need to be careful how we move forward. And it's interesting. Thomas Edison was brilliant. And so was Nikolai Tesla, but they had different emphases mm -hmm. or emphases, however you say that. And, um, but as we know that even back in that day, there was this argument over what was better, DC or AC. Now we know for long distance transmission, it was AC. But even someone as brilliant as Thomas Edison was arguing about that. And there was a lot of flux in terminology back then that would confuse new people coming to the field. I think we're wrestling with that now. AI is more of a characteristic. Data science is a branch of specialization where it's a it's a three-way intersection of mathematical branches computing and by the way st statisticians don't like me calling statistics a branch of math so it's a type of science so maybe it's a four-way intersection but uh, branches of math statistics computing and human needs or business or however you want to call it and when those three come together you're looking for ways to benefit from data. And uh, I'm a big proponent of start with the visualization, do exploratory data analysis, do that thorough like you're a data visualizer expert, and that will lead you to better machine learning. And even there's a lot of things I preach that I'm still trying to get better at myself, but it's a spirit of understanding the terminology is going to be in flux for a while. I don't like the dichotomy of uh, analysts versus scientists, et cetera. Um, I don't like it when Scott Taylor or Susan Walsh feel, or Kate Strachney feel compelled to say, well, I'm not a data scientist. Yeah, but you're doing really good work in the realm, 80% of the realm we have to work in anyway. And I remember, um, our, you know, we're part of a community now, George and Diana, and, um, even before I was part of that community, I was just riveted by Scott Taylor, things he would say, things he would teach. And I would pass it on to other friends within my company. You got to listen to this guy. This is great. And uh, now I'm so glad that my world has opened up and a lot of thanks to LinkedIn for that. Uh, they create a platform where we can create these communities. So basically another great advice for people who want to work in data science or to expand their field is to network. And a great place to do it is LinkedIn and to connect yes. with, with the people. And go a little, 
go a little outside your own realm into the associated realms, which is why the three of us are friends. <laughs> I, when I listen to you, Tom, the, the, one of the main things that comes to mind are, oh my God, Tom is so smart. I could mm. never be like him. Because, you know, everything that you, you just said and how you described it, it's like Tom is the chosen one and, uh, <laughs> and nobody else could be. So um, a, a data scientist is good as him. So I wanted to, to ask you if people wouldn't go, you know, your path, which is, you know, amazing and very deep as well. Um, where would they start? So besides, you know doing data science work, but even before that. I, I, lo I love to use sporting analogies for this and hiking analogies. And is my uh, dog barking noise too much in the background? No, no, it's, okay, no good. it's very homey. We like okay. it. <laughs> okay, good, because someone's being bad out there. Um, so it's been a while since I've been to the gym because of COVID and uh, I'm, I'm trying to explore getting back there or something. But um, sometimes I go to the gym and, you know, at the gym, I'm relatively a big guy, but you know what? There's always someone bigger. <laughs> and, and I think, you know what? They've been here and been more devoted in their muscular building than me. And I, I'm not trying to be, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger or someone like that, but <clears throat> I'm thinking, oh, you know what? It was time at the gym. It was learning, mastering the basics on diet and lifting and recovery. And um, it just takes time. I mean, look, I'm almost 60. I'll be 60 this year. And I know everyone was thinking I look 40. But uh, mm -hmm. the point being, you know, I there were, I remember vividly sitting in uh, dynamics as an undergrad. And going, what? What? And that was the basics of Newtonian physics and applying it to mechanical systems. And now I look at it and I think, why did I make that so hard? Hmm. And so now when I try to help others that are where I was then, I'm thinking, how can I make this more simple? What was not said that would have helped me? And and I think we always need to do a better job helping the the younger generations get to where we are faster, quicker, but please treat it. And this is another analogy I love to use. The longest hikeable trail in the world is from the tip of South Africa all the way up through uh, Eastern Europe, um, over the Caspian Sea and to the East Coast of Russia. Wow. It's about 14,000 miles. It'll take you three and a half years to do it if you do it at a nice pace. Well, you're going to have to provision. And if you're going to walk each distance, you can't jump ahead hundreds of miles at a time, but you will be a different person when you reach the end of that trail. And I would like to say data science is a little bit like that, just a lot longer. But enjoy the journey. Enjoy the hike. Don't try to forego the basics. Don't jump into deep learning. Uh, there's, as I, I know David Langer would back me up on this. And Danny Ma too. Yeah, exactly. That's what it can feel like if you jump right into it. Hold your breath. Um, it, there's so much that can be done with linear and logistic regression if you know how to use those tools well. And there's a lot that can be done with very basic neural networks. But the what I try to point out to people is you should try out many models in any, if you're going to go to modeling, that is, you don't always need to go to modeling. Sometimes data visualization is enough. But if you go into modeling, explore all the models, but always visit linear regression and logistic regression because they, they tell you so much. Now, my buddy David Langer, the pirate that's always saying R, because um, he's in that other language, which is a great language, by the way. Uh, he loves getting people started with decision trees and random forests. And I see why it, it solves a lot of problems that you have to solve with linear and logistic regression. But I'm the Tony Stark mentality that says, is it too much to do both? You know, let's, and I, I like that approach using them both and seeing what you can learn from each of them. 
So in the summary answer to you, Diana, is it's it's like if you're skinny in your data science knowledge and your data science skills, just keep going to that mental gym and keep working out. You'll get there. And and you should take, uh, you know, one step at a time and start <laughs> learning all these different skills. And maybe this is not the right order, but it's really trying to get the message across. I love that order. By the way, people say, well, where should I start? Hmm. Well, if you get really good at Python first or just st start getting some skill with Python, then you can actually start coding what you're learning in the other steps and it'll be more fun for you. You'll have more skill because in at the end of the day, we need to automate the analyses we're doing. And that's why Python and R are so popular. We can use them to automate things. And um, some people may say, oh, you should start with something with C or, or C++. I'm like, well, yeah, I learned those too. I started with Fortran on punch cards back in the day. But you know what? Then at the end, you still have to learn to code and program well. And you want to pick up good principles. That's why you've seen me do posts on uh, Dave and Andy's book, The Pragmatic Programmer. It's been out for 20 years, still a bestseller. Why? Because they're very pragmatic about programming. Right, right. And okay. And once you are learning all these skills, you're building your portfolio. One of the issues that I've seen is so recently I'm, I'm doing this video on what the difference is between the data analyst and the data scientist, just because so many, many people are asking about it. And anyways, uh, and like you said, maybe it's not good to go there, but I was reading maybe over a hundred job descriptions and most of them were asking for experience. So as a data analyst, they were asking, well, you have you need to have at least two years worth of experience as a data scientist, you know, even more. How does one get that experience if they're unable to right? like to get experience? They're asking for experience is the catch 22 piece. Do you have any recommendations for people that are just getting out of school? Absolutely. And it really goes back to that blog post we were talking about at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Yeah. It's this spirit of, hey, how many roles out there could be done better with data science or, or data analysts, data analysis or business analysis? A lot of them. I want to point out to the audience, I've been doing data science in my mind since freshman year of undergrad in 1980. I did my first least squares fit of data in physics lab and I was in love. I thought that is too cool. I just found a way to put the minimal error line through all these data points. That is so cool. Well, there's a lot of jobs where they don't say they're data science, but you're doing a lot. You could do a lot of data science in that role. Well, build your resume. In this role, I applied data science principles to achieve these things. Then in my next role, I applied data science or machine learning principles to achieve these things. I automated some data visualization data uh, dashboards with Power BI or Tableau or uh, Google Data Studio or even Python or R and, and created, well, if you've got those catchwords in your resume and it's legitimate, you're, you are a data scientist, you just don't have the title. So again, don't fixate on getting that role title right away, but do care about getting a role where you can make the biggest difference with your passion for data science or data analysis skills. And then before long, you'll realize, oh, I'm in demand for data science roles or business analyst roles, et cetera. Um, yeah, I think that's it in a nutshell. That's well said. So from what I'm hearing is you can always choose to go above and beyond your current role, even though it's not necessarily in the data science field, but start applying those data science principles and methodologies and improve some of their processes or ways that they're doing things right. And add that to your resume. That's, that's And maybe even move within the same company towards a more data science um, oriented role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I want to I want to make a confession to the audience because I want them to avoid some bad habits I developed. Um, I, I've always been pretty um, natural at speaking, but.
but I took that to 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 think, oh, I, I don't need soft skills practice and I don't need to, you know, I've been a salesman, you know, outside of the engineering realm many times. And so those skills are good. You know what? This uh, I arrived mentality, I'm already great at this, is is a killer. I wish I'd had a spirit of I'm okay for my age. What I need to do is keep growing these skills. So please, everyone, buy Gilbert's book, buy John Thompson's book, subscribe to my dear sister's channel, uh, Giovanna, uh, her soft skills channel. Start learning these things. Um, and But don't think, oh, I'm good at that. I'll go focus and always look, where could I do better? Where could I do better? That was a big failure I made because I wasn't integrating as well with my teams as I could have. I wasn't helping people with super frequent feedback on the tools. I, I made some great tools that didn't get used enough because I wasn't getting off my butt and out of my cube and helping people know how to benefit from them more. And that was on me, by the way. Well, what was that? That It wasn't necessarily that I lacked the soft skills. I wasn't putting enough emphasis on using them and interacting with people. That's, that's well said. And I want to add to your list, definitely follow Tom if you aren't already engaged with him. Check out his Would love channel. It. And of course, go to integratedmlai.com. And you mentioned Giovanna's uh, group. How can uh, our listeners and the audience uh, reach her? So, yeah, she's part of our family. But I would, uh, if y'all could put her LinkedIn uh, in the chat, because I, I don't have control of the chat, but it's uh, Giovanna Regina Galino Malaga. I'm sure y'all can all spell that just from the way I pronounce it. <laughs> She's uh, my Peruvian sister that's uh, living in Italy for well over up to seven years now. And she's part of our uh, steward team for integrated machine learning and AI mentoring. And uh, she helps us determine where to take the family to help them. Uh, we do what we call integrated mentoring. We, we created it because I was getting too many one-on-one -on -one mentoring requests. I said, I, I can't handle this. So I said, all right, would you, I started asking people, would you be willing to show, thank you, Ashish, would you be willing to show up uh, to a call in and bravely ask your question in front of others? But then what I want you to do is listen to what others would advise too, because if you just get my mentoring advice, it'll fall short. But if you hear from many others that want to help you, it'll be much better. Well, from the first question, it exceeded our vision and our hopes, and it's just grown. Uh, every Saturday has been a blessing. And now a class has come out of that that Guy Sankari and I teach. He's my dear brother. We've never met each other face to face except in these kind of meetings. And we're we are under contract to write a book for PAC together. And, but we, that was born out of us wanting to help our integrated family learn detailed data science principles in the way that we like to teach them and do them. And uh, it's just keep, keeps going. And now I've had to add a couple of uh, mentor calls on deep tech questions uh, at two times in the week that we're just getting started with that. Mm -hmm. And we'll record those and add them uh, to a YouTube channel for uh, being able to rewatch too. Please, please do. Can and we be your distant, distant cousins in that family? Because you're oh not my, no, uh, we we will adopt you as full siblings. We would oh. love to have the Firikins be part of our integrated. Why? In not both? Because we're married. <laughs> <laughs> well, so if, so if one of us is in the family, then the other one is exactly. okay. Okay. No, you, you can both be in the family and be my siblings. You just uh, you can also be married too. That'll be great. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll, I'll make sure we get y'all added soon. And uh, a big part of what we do, we have several channels. I'm looking at it right here, but one of them is LinkedIn post support. Well, where we help support each other's LinkedIn posts because we we really do honestly love what each other are posting. So. That's amazing. And I did join your, your Slack channel. And uh, thanks to Donabelle as well for recommending that to me. And uh, I really appreciate you being part of it. Uh, and we, and we can't people. have Donabelle on our on our mentoring sessions enough. We really love it when she shows up. And yes, Ashish, thank you for those names. 
Thank you. A lot of people keep asking about it. So thanks, Ashish, again for providing this info. All right. Um, yeah, there are a lot of amazing words of encouragement and as well as gratitude. So uh, thank you, you know, Matthew and yeah. It, it blows me away, the praise and encouragement we get, and it's the fuel that keeps me going. And to me, when I look up grit in the dictionary, there's a picture of T. Scott Clendaniel there. My hat's off to him. Love that guy. <laughs> absolutely absolutely we we had him a couple a couple times on the show and uh he's he's amazing as well um you mentioned two books i think while you um while while you were talking and also when you mentioned giovanna can you repeat those recommendations yes uh and i'll butcher pronouncing his last name but gilbert I'd kill a boom, I think is how you say it, but it's uh, people skills for analytical thinkers. And then John Thompson's book is, um, excuse me, Building Analytics Teams. It's from PACT. And then um, Greg Coquillo and I have been working on some material together. And uh, we're, we're talking to PACT about creating a book from that that would be kind of a bridge between everyone's doing a great job filling the data science publication space in my opinion but there's still holes because this age is exploding and there's so much to talk about and greg and i are trying to to fill a hole we see um and we've just been really excited to talk about this material together so that's not out yet but we're talking to pact about what do you think about this kind of book and Pack's great to work with as an author because uh, they're just experts in that space of, okay, what's out there? Okay, can we do a better job than what's out there? Can we fill a hole that's out there? And uh, But then there's, I'm talking, these are like more the soft skill books, obviously tons of technical books out there that are right. worth writing. And I, I did a little video on Dennis's book that I think some people saw. <laughs> that was fun to make too. And <laughs> It was quite gratifying. I, all I cared was that Dennis liked it. And he, he liked it so much. It, 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 <laughs> I was on cloud nine because of how much he enjoyed it. But I, my hat was off to him because the community very much needed his book. Very much needed it. Absolutely. Now, as, as we're coming to an end, unfortunately, uh, Jonathan has a really great question. I think that will help us conclude the show as well. So if there was one single piece of advice for professionals already in data science, and those pursuing a career in data science, what would that advice be? It would be learn, execute, rest, review, repeat. This is a long journey. Don't get discouraged when you're having a hard time figuring out a principle. Be gentle and patient with yourself. Know that the understanding, the conceptual enlightenment is coming. Don't try to rush through that part of your learning. Really learn it well, learn it extensively. Go learn some other things, come back and learn it more deeply. Um, and please put a lot of energy into those mentoring posts on our, our blog. Um, they're there for you. They're there for everyone getting started. They're written from the heart. Like what would I wish I'd have heard when I was starting like you are? Jonathan's one of my top students, by the way. He's been on some of my early tech calls. He's in our class and I just love his spirit. He's, he's being very honest about what he's confused on. And he's that person that asks the brave questions that maybe others are afraid to ask. And I love him for it. And so, because he asked those questions, we can clear it up for multiple other people. That's fantastic. You know, Tom, I think you're one of the kindest and most supportive and brilliant people that I know. Yes. Wow. So much that, for giving back to the whole community. So your contribution brings so much added value to the lives of so many people. And I think personal and professional lives. So I think you're a great example of of how we can support each other. And if people were in the world would be like you, this world would be perfect. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that. A quick word to my friends out there that I consider smarter than me. 
please reach out and help people. Your communication skills will grow. Your skills will grow. I do it because I know that people like Manpreet and Kushal Dev and Jonathan Papworth, I could go on and on and on. They're going to be the next heroes. They're going to go beyond where I am when they're my age. And if you look at the history of math and science, it's the next generation that always goes higher. I'm honored to be a part of helping them get there quickly and, and more in a more healthy state. So that's what motivates me. But it also helps me grow, too, which is a great side benefit. Absolutely. And I think uh, you really start to learn the most when you're trying to teach a particular exactly. topic. Absolutely. Because you need to know it so well that you can explain it to others. Yeah. yeah. And the motivation to learn is different when you know that it's not only you benefiting, but it's other people as well. Mm. I, That's a very good point. Yeah. I. This is how I actually started teaching yoga. I knew that I wanted to become a yoga teacher since the second yoga class so everything that I learned I learned it having in mind that I want to teach others as well and it you know it's like a switch in your brain that yeah. have, makes you have a different approach to learning so it's it's beneficial for everyone and one oh did we lose Tom here I think we did oh no and I hope we are still on. Um, and thank you so much, Ashish, for posting the the Lights on Data channel as well. I really appreciate it. And uh, yes, like Susan said, it, it does feel good to help people. I couldn't agree more. Um, we had and, some wonderful comments today. Yeah. And yes, we will make uh, this available uh, as a recording as well. It will be on on YouTube, on uh, on the the link that Ashish, Ashish posted. So thank you so much. Or you can also go to lightsondata.com for this, and you're gonna find not only this recording but the recording of the other episodes as well. And thanks for letting us know, Scott. Uh, sorry that we we lost uh, Tom, but we're we're coming to a close here. And yes, LinkedIn couldn't handle the awesomeness. And <laughs> he overloaded the value meter. <laughs> Completely agree. Absolutely. And, as Andrew said, frozen in deep thought or deep learning. So my suggestion would be to um, connect with um, uh, with Tom if you haven't already. I'm sure that he's going to be more than willing to share with everyone what he wanted to say. And as his closing thought, I'm actually a little bit sad that he didn't get to say it. However, I think he um, he shared a lot of very valuable stuff today. And we're very grateful for his time and for, for being so open to sharing. Absolutely. And as uh, Susan was asking, yes, we'll show the intro again and uh, we'll uh, bid you farewell afterwards. So thank you so much, everybody. Let's put it on. <laughs> Tom, aren't you a doctor? No. Tom, aren't you a banker? No. Tom, aren't you a dentist? No. Tom, aren't you a lawyer? No. No. Tom, aren't you an insurance salesman? No. Tom, aren't you a dentist? No. Hi, Tom. Susan? No, silly. This is your fashion conscience. You sound like Susan Walsh. Well, Tom, can you imagine a better voice for your fashion conscience? Good point. Tom, I see that you are down. Down because people don't see you as the data scientist and data zealot that you are. Exactly. Use that love you have for the history of math and science to figure out how a modern day data scientist and data zealot would dress in modern times. I'm sure you'll nail it. Okay, excellent. How ancient math and data science zealots dressed. Oh, I don't think that'll work. Ah, yeah, that should do it. What's the modern version of that? Modern version of a cloak. Good morning data show hoodie. Ah, that should do it.
Tom? Did you lose your job? No. Tom, did you lose your job? No. Tom, are you out of work? No. Tom, did you lose your job? No. Tom, I think the Ferricans have changed the name of their show. Lights on Data Show. Lights on Data. No. Okay. Tom, you're a data scientist, aren't you? Yeah. Tom, you're a machine learning specialist, aren't you? Yes. Tom, you're a data zealot, aren't you? Yes. Tom, you're an engineer that uses data, right? Yes. Yes, he is all those things. But most of all, he is a data evangelist.